So, I think like most of you with a Persa i3 MK3 printer, you've probably ordered the upgrade. I'm just impatient. It takes five weeks. It costs more than $40 because of the shipping. So in that time, I decided, well, what could a person do for less than $40 and much quicker? I have ordered the parts. They are coming. I will use them when they get here. But that didn't stop me from experimenting. So I was going, what could a person do uh, another way to make it all work? So I printed the new MK3 S parts out. And the first thing I tried was, I thought about, since I can't get their special little uh, IR sensor because it's so small, I went, what if I took one of the in inductive proximity sensors like is used on my TiVo Flash because on the TiVo Flash it uses an end sense but you can get the same sensor that senses what they call the top and you can also get it with an NPN output and you can also get it normally closed and those are all things that you need in order to work with the person <clears throat> this being for the TiVo Flash it, uh, it unfortunately is normally open so I would have to invert the output to normally closed and it's an end sense instead of top, so it wouldn't really fit inside the unit. So I started searching on eBay for the heck of it, and I found a much larger, unfortunately, but I could still fit it in the case, proximity sensor. And I have in this one here, it's one that has the steady on light. So when you insert the filament, the light means that you're out of filament. And when you put it in, of course the light goes out, and it will send the appropriate signal to the unit. So what's actually in there is I've hollowed out the case a little bit and put the larger proximity sensor which did have the top sense and it already has an indicator light as part of it and it already had the normally closed NPN output so it'll interface with the printer. In other words I can use this unit as is. I have a, a 7 millimeter steel ball inserted in there and to get the ball to retract back, I put a little magnet, super strong magnet right here. In this case, it's a... Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of my electric toothbrush. Anyway, we've got uh, Sonicare, I think it is. And they've, the Sonicare toothbrush ends, you're supposed to replace every three months. And rather than just throwing them out, I first yanked the magnets off the bottom because they got two really strong magnets on them. This is one of them here. So you just glued it on there and that it'll hold that ball in there even with filament in there and even if it was out of this case you can't shake the ball loose that magnet sucks that ball back in really strong works really well so this has a, a lot less parts you have one magnet one ball one sensor but it does cost more money if you were manufacturing the printer i mean what what persa came up with for their unit is uh, extremely inexpensive and easy to manufacture the only downfall for us is when we order the kit is that super high shipping rate bumps everything up to being around forty two dollars forty three dollars in this case even if i bought the sensor in the smaller form like this these are like twenty six bucks if you pay full retail from almost any vendor alley electronics digikey panasonic these originally were made by Sun X, but Panasonic now owns them. But um, so you could do the mod yourself for under thirty dollars and, and have less parts and and more reliability actually. And it'll uh, even though the sensors are normally rated when you see them anywhere from ten to twenty four volts, twelve to twenty four volts, they work just fine at five volts. The all the ones in the uh, TiVo Flash are running at five volts, even though they're rated twelve to twenty four. So that's not a problem. So after I uh, accomplished that, I said, okay, that'll work. I wonder if I could do it even cheaper. So I thought about using a Hall Effect sensor. So this one here, I'm using a flashing LED as an indicator, but buried in here is the same steel ball, same magnet to retract it, but I'm using a Hall Effect sensor to detect uh, the position of the ball. So if the filament's in right now, the machine would see that it was in, and this would send a low signal saying that it's out. The, the thing about Holofix sensors is they're super small. They're less than 50 cents. You can't get cheaper than that. 
but they're not good at sensing accurate distance, so the movement of the ball. So in order to do that, you actually have to trick them. Normally in a Hall Effect sensor, you have a magnetic force to one side or to the other side. In this case, I put it right below the ball, so the ball is on top of an edge. So when the ball moves, that uh, the thickness of, of this, what, 1.72 millimeters, that kicks the ball from one side to the other. And because there's a magnet holding the ball in, the ball is also magnetic, so that shifts the field. So I was able to use a Hall Effect sensor in that way. And nothing has to occupy any of this space that's in the normal one. There's the, the ball being held in by the same magnet. You can see it works. The sensor, I actually cut a, a slot before I put this piece in and slip the sensor in from the back and it just slides in like I just said kind of fits just to one side of the ball like where I have this white filament so when the ball moves over further that throws the magnetic field on the opposite side of the sensor and trick trips it so there are uh, there are ways to do this that are going to be as reliable and if you factor in the shipping costs or actually cheaper that you can do on your own and of course the files for printing the parts are on the Persa website so that's not a problem being it's open source and if you're a DIY kind of guy like me and just like playing around with it there's a couple of ways that uh, you can do it on your own if you don't want to wait the five weeks and pay the the forty some odd dollars for the upgrade kit but like I said I gave them my money I'm happy to give Persa my money I think they do a great job in engineering and everything they do they're just a very big benefit to the whole 3d printing community so love to support them any way i can that's why i've uh, bought their printers starting with the mk2 because it was just a workhorse and then the mk3 and when they come out with the mk4 or something i'll be buying one of those as well but uh, having some fun with it trying a different way of sen using sensors i really like the uh Proximity sensor, inductive proximity, it'll be very reliable, it's very robust, and uh, I'll probably be putting this on the machine first, and if for any reason it doesn't work out right, when their kit gets here, I'll go ahead and print a set of parts and put their optocoupler on there. Nothing wrong with the optocoupler, an induct inductive proximity sensor will last longer than an opto, but let's be honest, the opto is probably going to outlast the rest of the machine anyway, it'll have a long life being used the way that it's designed. So, just having some fun. Go out and build. Do.